Hello, I'm Luke Westaway for CNET, leading a conga down memory lane as we examine the evolution of Samsung's Galaxy S phones. Samsung has just revealed the Galaxy S4, a smartphone powerhouse that seems like a surefire hit and more than capable of going toe to toe with Apple's iPhone. But it wasn't just one mobile that got Samsung to this point, instead it was years of progress and smartphone development that kicked off when Samsung first got involved in Android. Cast your mind back to June 2009. It was in this month that Samsung's first Android phone was released. The i7500 was also known as the Samsung Galaxy and had a 3.2 inch display and a 5 megapixel camera. We gave the Galaxy 4 stars in our review, but we weren't impressed with its boring appearance and its lack of multi-touch. When it came out, Apple was already on its second iPhone, so there was plenty of catching up to do. One year later though, Samsung had made a lot of progress. The Galaxy S established a new line of high-end smartphones to distinguish Samsung's best efforts from its mid-range mobiles, and it blew us away with a 4-inch Super AMOLED display. That doesn't seem like much by today's standards, but a few years ago it was an absolutely massive screen, an early indicator of Samsung's lust for bigger and bigger phones. The Galaxy S was good, but weedy battery life and some glitchy Samsung software meant it wasn't perfect. At this point as well, Samsung still wasn't comparing favourably to Apple, which in the same month gave its smartphone a welcome redesign in the iPhone 4 and introduced the Retina display. Fast forward once more, now it's May 2011, Samsung has officially put the Galaxy S2 on sale, treating phone shoppers to a 4.3 inch screen and a shockingly powerful 1.2 GHz dual core processor. This was the phone that proved Samsung was the most serious contender to the smartphone crown. The Galaxy S had given a taste of what the company could produce in terms of a big screen and a slim design, but it was the S2 that first bundled those elements into a seriously compelling gadget. It was a massive step forward. I can remember getting my hands on the S2 when it first came out and being struck by just how slick it felt when you're swooping around home screens. The other thing that was really noticeable was how thin and light it was, something that seemed totally at odds with how much hardware you knew was on board. It was obvious at the time that this was a brilliant smartphone and it sold bucket loads. In May 2012, all eyes were on Samsung to see how it would follow the S2 and we weren't disappointed. The Galaxy S3 introduced an oval design with a bigger 4.8 inch screen and up the resolution to 1280 by 720 pixels. Inside it was powered by a 1.4 GHz quad core processor. The S3 was showered with praise and awards, but more importantly this phone made it clear exactly what Samsung's smartphone strategy was. A high end screen and processor tech in a thin and light casing, but loaded with more bespoke apps than you could ever want or need. S Voice, S Planner, S Memo, Pop Up Play, Eye Tracking, Samsung threw everything except the kitchen sink into the S3, resulting in a phone with more features than you could shake a stick at, even if many owners would never even open them. This year's Galaxy S4 continues that theme. Design wise, not a lot has changed, though the screen is now 5 inches and has a 1080p resolution. There's no end to the new apps on board though, including the calorie counting S Health, more eye tracking features, gestures for controlling the phone without making contact with the touchscreen, and an obscene number of new camera tricks. So, what does this S Phone evolution tell us? Well, if you look back over these four phones, what I see is that Samsung first makes a statement with big brash hardware with the Galaxy S and S2, and then settles into a groove with the S3 and S4, making its gadgets distinct from Apple's carefully curated minimalist mobiles with a massive stack of features that you also won't find on other Android phones. Looking to the future, Samsung obviously continues to face stiff competition from the iPhone, but it could be caught unawares by Google, which surprised us all last year by making the very powerful, very cheap Nexus 4, which runs an untouched version of Android. If Google repeats the trick this year with another dirt cheap super phone, that could seriously shake up the smartphone status quo. Which is your favourite Galaxy S phone and what do you want to see in the Galaxy S5? Let me know. I'm Luke Westray for CNET and this was the evolution of Samsung's Galaxy S phones.